16 November MAO with Cal. Right, guys. People is all talking about the US market right now. But the thing is this, I felt that the catalyst is going to come from the Europe side instead. And I'll explain more in detail with you later. And would that actually cause a repercussion towards the US side? I think it will. So let's go into it right now. Now, once again, disclaimer apply as usual. And thank you, Amos, for the kind sponsorship. Now, before we go to the Europe side, let's look at the PPI data yesterday. Now, wow, incredible. The PPI data came out to be 8.0. Well, that is very good. Because the last time we saw was 8.4. So a reduction of 0.4. That is much higher, better than the uh, what the analysts are looking at, 0.2. So probably, as from here right now, it seems that we are going to really have a peaking inflation okay and because of that you can see right now the year on year and the month on month is very clear there's a pullback since june june is shot up all the way last year june all the way to the peak which is near december and that is where it came off right at the same time when this was happening right here the stock market came off more than uh 20 percent at the same time so the question is, if this number continue to go lower, right, would that mean the stock market will actually recover? Well, I will give you a two view here itself. Now, you must understand, when these things are coming down, right, you can see that even the energy price is, uh, energy causes the PPI to shrink, but you must understand at the same time, if the energy prices goes back up again, this will make the PPI data go again a higher same thing with cpi so the main thing is that the energy price has to stay low but based on what i'm saying right now if the global economy is going to reopen as in china then the consumption of energy will be there then the price now is high with a higher interest rate so i felt that right this may be a problem but at least for now it has seemingly peaked but i still don't think that we as we have seen the highest yet in my opinion yeah so of course the uh, the bigger thing other than the ppi data was yesterday we saw a incredible piece of news where Poland say Russian made missile hits its territory. All right. Now apparently when he when he did that, the stock market rattled a little bit. But immediately we also saw news that even Biden says it's unlikely that the missile fire was from Russia, even though uh, the thing was written by uh, from Poland saying it was Russian made missile. Okay. And of course um, they are saying that it could be an isolated case. So a lot of interesting stuff. Stuff, but you can see the world leaders began to hold an emergency meeting on this on this russian made missile now the emphasis is russian made why you keep on emphasizing on that right so when we dig deeper as well right apparently from uh, kralin says that the denied involvement in the explosion the russian defense ministry says that it's done by the polish media who reported the deaths but again that seems to be a deliberate provocation in order to escalate the current situation so it shows that there were wreckage here but the thing is that um the russian side denied hmm, that's interesting and it, it seems that right it felt that this thing here that the missile ended is a single act and there's no evidence of further missile strikes so it, it seems that it doesn't make sense right if the russian really want to create a war why would they do it right now? It doesn't make sense. And why Poland? So all these things is up put a very big question mark. And I just got this tingling feel that uh, this is like the Vietnam War happening again, where we all know that apparently it's all right. It was not the Vietnamese that started the war. Mm, okay. So of course, the, the stock market tumbled. Now, before we go there, it's all right. You can see that the US side apparently came in very interesting. Let me just cover it up a bit here and there. Okay, you can see that the Pentagon couldn't uh, corroborate that the reports of the Russian missile in Poland. In short, they are trying to say that they cannot confirm that the missile came from Russia. But it's just that the media from Poland has been establishing it and that created the so-called panic. So you look at it right now, the stock market, it gap up in the morning because in mean, US morning, it gap up, right? Because of the good PPI data. And the stock market was doing pretty well at least it was stabilizing then when the news came out of the missile attack the market bang came down and taken out all the gains that was given by the ppi but incredibly after that when the us and the russian came in said they didn't claim i mean the us side said that it may not be and russia said that it's not done by them the market rebounded mm, okay interesting yeah but of course you can see when the market was coming off right the volume surged quite fast and towards the end of the day Again, the volume was there. Mm, okay, so what I'm trying to say is that, well, it's a pump and a dump in my opinion, 
But uh, well, if you're talking about fundamental, seems that it fits some some part of it. I just felt that there's something not not right. Now let's look at the Europe side, and I've been telling you this. Okay, now the systemic stress has spiked in Europe in 2022. Now this is something called Game of Trades, one of the YouTubers that I follow. So I'm not going to like take their credits. But the thing is this: I just give you more in my own opinion. Yeah. Now the CCI SS aims to measure the current state of the instability in the financial system as a whole, or Uh, equivalently, the level of systemic stress. Now, systemic stress is interpreted as the amount of systemic risk which has been already materialized. Okay, so in short, it's about the risk in the financial system. Okay, so what I did was I realized that at zero point five, okay, that was the last time where the Lehman Brothers started having the problem. But once Lehman Brothers started when in the in the uh, U.S. side, of course, it spread to the Europe side, and of course, the whole world got into panic. But You can see that the five number is a point five is an important level to watch out for, and incredibly now, right? Yes, exploded in Europe, but less so in America. So what I'm trying to say is this: while everybody is actually emphasizing the problem or thinking the problem come from US, but the main thing driver problem now is coming from Europe, and of course, can Europe spread back to US? It is very, very possible, and that's what I'm actually watching this very closely because right now, if you look at it. Okay, you can see that right. The euro area and the US, the year-to-date growth in manufacturing by countries. We have France, Italy, US doing pretty okay, but Germany, Greece is pretty bad. And of course, you can see that over here, Germany is not in a negative position, and of course, Belgium is even worse. So what I'm trying to say is that if Germany is not doing that well, right by right, the index shouldn't be doing that good, right? So let's take a look here. Let me just clear the screen a little bit. You can see right now, right, the euro relative to U.S. stock market forward P/E ratio has dropped down all the way to the same level what you see back in the Lehman Brothers time. So that means that the European stock now are trading about thirty-three percent to the U.S. one. So that means the same company now, the in Europe now is suffering. And the chance is that if the economy, let's say U.S. do fall for whatever reason. And very high chance the Europe side will be even worse, right? So that is one thing that I'm watching it very closely right now. And if you look at it, I felt that the German DAX is really at the overbought area. Now let's take a look here. You can see that the German DAX actually uh bottomed out at about eleven thousand eight hundred over here, and then it went all the way up to this point now is fourteen thousand three hundred. Now that's quite a fair bit, all right. But if you look at the point of the highest point to the lowest point here and do a Fibonacci, we are very, very close to the sixty-one point eight. Now sixty-one point eight is a very mystical, num- magical number, and um, this number shows that one, four, ah, uh, five, nine, eight. It's a very important figure to watch. Now, if the market fail to cross back above fourteen five ninety eight, then watch out for this fourteen zero seven six. Because if the market has come back here and get supported, that is a good sign. That means there could be further upside. But if the market fail to stay above fourteen zero seven six, then there could be a free fall all the way back down. To thirteen thousand five hundred fifty-four, and based on the RSI reading that I'm having right now, you can see over here. Sorry, over here, you can see that the RSI reading shows that we are at the overbought situation. The last time it was here, and now we are doing here. So it's actually a、uh, what they call a negative divergence. Hence, therefore, I suspect that selling will come. And of course. The last few days, you can see the volume has been coming off, right? So that also tells me that the pushing up itself has come to fatigue, and there's a good chance that we may see some profit taking in the near term. So that's why traders, in my opinion, go slow and for now and watch this Europe side very, very closely. Okay, all right. So that is the fundamental. Let's look at the technical for now. Now the technical side.、Uh, before we go into the side, let's look at the.、Um, The other charts like this, the ten-year yield. Now, ten-year yield yesterday came down to about three point seven five. I was a bit、uh, concerned at that point because it couldn't, it doesn't make sense. But now, as of now, it's rebounded a little bit. Now, it's really difficult for me to expect it to come down to three point six percent because by right, mathematically,、uh, with the current rate right now, it's at four to four point two five percent for the ten-year yield to be trading at three point eight. It doesn't really make much sense here itself. So, I feel there's a lot of artificial. Uh, what they call pushing down of numbers, but、uh, if the ten-year yield start to recover back to three point nine percent, then I think that it will go back up again. And I suspect that this.
this movement will be coming in soon the next few uh, weeks all right so that's something that i want you to take note and of course at the same time we can see that this is the us dollar now the us dollar came off low to 105.30 yesterday wow okay it's very near to my support at 105 level a oh, long tail there but the, today it seems that there's a bit of pullback here the dollar need to stand back above 106.90 to 107 to be firm at this area here so that i still believe the dollar will go back up to 107.80 now my view in the next two weeks is that the dollar will be going back up because there's no much more fundamental and with the uh, midterm election almost done deal i cannot see why there's any need to do any special arrangement in my in this case right now all right so based on what I'm seeing now for my uh, TWB system result, right, my KFC for Dow Jones here itself is 33,031. The market is staying firmly above it. As long as the market doesn't break 33,031, there's no need to panic. But there's something that you must take note is 3 doji for now. Now the last time we see 3 doji, I mean I tried to find for you itself is quite some time ago. It's somewhere around here and the market after that collapsed down, down by uh, about 2,000 points. Then of course, if you can look back on the tape, you don't see much triple doji. Now usually if you see a triple doji, that means that the market could go to big movement like here itself. It seems to be like triple doji and we have the market going up by almost uh, 1,500 points. Okay, um, there's, there's only two dojis and next day the market plunged by 1,000 points. Um, here we have a two dojis here and the market sideways for a few days then the market plunged basically almost by 3,000 points. So usually when you have a doji formation and it's like three of them consecutively side by side, we do expect bigger movements. So I'm, I'm going to give a bit of forecast right now here. Okay, everybody just take a look. Now, if let's say the market chose upside because it's triple doji and chose upside, right? Well, I believe that the first target that the market would be going will be somewhere around 34,000. That is quite minimum. Okay, I think 34,000 is a fair number. The next number the market can go can be as high as 34,770. Okay, so this is the upside that I think that the market could go if the market can go past 34,000. Now on the same notation, if the market goes down instead, then I'm so sorry, it is slightly going to go down all the way to 32,550. Right, so traders, you can see that the upside potential and the downside potential is almost the same, but the, there's a barrier here at 34,000 and the next target is 34,770. Okay, so these are the two levels to watch out for on the upside and the downside number is 32,550. Okay. All right, now China market today uh, has pulled back. You can see that it's similar alternating. So as long as China market stays above 12,280, we're still relatively fine, okay? All right, now for the 5% rule that I have for you guys, the market as long as it stays above 33,258, the 90% mark, the market still have a good chance to climb up higher. All right, the mid level between them is somewhere around 34,100. I'll do the calculation um, later, all right? Okay, so watch out for these traders, watch out for this. And um, let's look at the Dow Jones right now for today. Okay, so the today Dow Jones with a new BMB level. So the KSI and KLW are both still in the positive positioning. So as long as the market stays above the MLP 33,613, we should see the market tapping the BNB uh, RL level at this 34,042. But of course, if the market can stay a bit higher, we can see it going to 34,743. Uh, 34, the downside itself is pretty interesting. It's 32,642. And that is almost the same level that I just mentioned, which is somewhere around here itself. Okay. All right. So pardon me on that. I think I made a mistake here. 32,600. So over here is 32,550. Yeah, about the same figure. Mm, interesting. Okay. All right, so that is the Dow Jones for you. The, the NASDAQ, let's put it in right now. Okay, here we go. The NASDAQ has hit my 11,906 yesterday. In fact, it blasts up all the way to 12,097. Then, of course, when the news came in about the attack, right, from on Poland, the thing pulled it back off. But now, I think yes, the, since the news is all saying that it may not be from Russia, so now the market is firming up. So as long as the market stays above 11,811, we should see further upside again. 11,976 will be the first KCB 
level to watch out for. Now the next target could be all the way to MA200 as 12,113. Now like I say once again, as long as the dollar is weakening or not moving much as well, the US stock market should be able to trade higher. But once the US dollar starts to get some strength or they have to buy into it, then watch out. Okay, S&P, Nasdaq should come off. Now MLP now uh, is for the S&P 500 39.79. This morning it tapped and rebounded, so that is cool. Interesting that the KSI is still red, but the science tell me that the buying interest is still there. So that basically overwhelmed it, and now it's pushing up. Um, the target, the upside will be 4.045. Okay, that's a bit far from now, but uh, as long as the upside is still okay, 4.045 is next. But if not, watch out for 39.79. Okay. Now for Hang Seng, today it has continued to recover. Initially it drops first, but it recovered all the way to 18,000. But now I think it gave back most of the profit and likely going to end as a doji for today. So that means that we could see a doji directional day tomorrow. So traders watch out for that. Now for Nikkei, definitely is trying its best to hold itself up above the BNB RL. The BNB RL is 27,942. So as long as it stays for 942, the market is still relatively in the buying mode. But once the market loses this number here at this 27,942, then sorry, but I believe that there will be some selling coming in soon. Okay. Now for DAX, uh, it's not open yet. It's open up, opening soon. I just want to stay here for a while to, to come back to you. All right, so let's look at the gold market for now. A quick one. Okay, let's just do some silver first. Now for silver, it is... Okay, wait, this is not the exact chart moment yet. It should be here. Okay. Okay, let's back to gold. Now gold has broke the downtrend uh, line, as you can see here. So that is the reason why you can see a sudden upsurge. But if you ask me for gold, uh, what's my view? I think that we are more or less near the resistance. So if today pivot two is 1771, if the market cannot stay above 1771, there's a very good chance it will come back down to MA200, which is 1749. But of course, if the gold market continue to leverage on the dollar's weakness, then of course, there's a high chance that the gold may even go all the way to tap the 1800 level. Now, indicator wise, it's both our four. Are uh, giving a pre a heads up for the uh, are looking the for gold to trade higher. Yeah, that's something that what the indicators are looking at right now. Now for silver, as I said once again, this is a very clear uh, what they call a candidate for buying. But uh, today, um, yesterday it closes below the BNB RL level, so I suspect that you hit around this support here at about this uh, 2090. Once we see that, there's a first base, but of course the one that I'm looking at to buy will be at 20 to 20. 21 level here about 20 to 2050 i think that will be a safe trade yeah okay so traders need to watch out for this silver in the long term i'm still looking at 30 dollars and above okay so we've done silver and gold let's look at the other two which is commodity this is the bitcoin and ethereum now this ethereum is still sideways now you can see very incredible it stays uh, at the high of the bm this bmb rl which is at trading at uh, 1289 all right, and the support is at 1170. So as long as Ethereum can break above this high here, we can see 1409. But if the market breaks MLP 1236 and the pivot to 2 at 1214, then the selling can bring it all the way down to somewhere near here. And that is pretty bad. That's 10,500 level. Okay. All right, so that is Ethereum for you. Let's look at Bitcoin. Now Bitcoin, we have a new BNB yesterday, and of course we have no much movement from from individuals. Now the thing is that the BNB RL is one seven uh, one eight three level. The support level is about one five eight zero four. So if the market can break above seventeen uh, one eight three, there's a high chance that it may go to eighteen zero five two. So let's watch out this. If not, there should be incubation incubation period for now because usually at this out time the crypto will be sideways a bit. But of course, we will need for bigger news to come in. All right, guys, that will be all for today. I wish you all the best. Remember, the market is always there. Go slow and trade well. This is Kel signing off. Bye-bye.